Jian Yan, the Chinese New Year is approaching, and it's going to be the Yacht Rabbit. Happy New Year! Usually, the Chinese New Year starts in early to mid February, but this coming Yacht Rabbit starts on January the twenty-first. It's abnormally early, and it's going to have thirteen months. The total number of days is going to be three hundred eighty-four. How does Chinese calendar work? That's the topic of this video. In my videos, when I describe certain historic events, I always say in certain month of certain year of Chinese lunar calendar. That's actually incorrect phrasing. Technically speaking. Chinese calendar is not a lunar calendar, but a lunisolar calendar that combines both the lunar calendar and solar calendar. A lunar calendar is a calendar based on the monthly cycles of the moon's phases. A cycle of such lunations is about 29 days. That's a month in a lunar calendar. The period of 12 such lunations is a lunar year, which contains about 354 days. Because a lunar year is 11 days shorter than a solar year, with the accumulation of discrepancy between the two, months in a lunar calendar don't synchronize with seasons anymore. It could even be summer in January. Leap months were invented to bridge the difference between the two calendars, but a solar year does not contain an integer number of lunar months. How to synchronize the two was a math problem. The ancient Chinese solved this problem three millennium ago. Assume by adding x leap months in the lunar calendars in a cycle of y solar years. The number of days in the two calendars would be equal. Then we get this equation. Obviously, you can't solve an equation with two variants, but we get ratio of the two. And seven over nineteen is very close to this ratio. So, by adding seven leap months in a cycle of nineteen solar years, the two calendars would be very close. That's what Chinese have been doing since three millennia ago. Throughout history, Chinese lunisolar calendar had many variations and evolved with different dynasties. Leap month used to be inserted at the end of the year. In the current Chinese calendar, it depends on the solar term. The opening ceremony of the 2022 Beijing Winter Olympic Games started with a short video about the 24 solar terms. Basically, four seasons were not precise enough for our agrarian society. We needed more precise indicators to guide our farming activities. A solar year then was divided into 24 periods. They are called the solar terms. Each has a name. The first solar term is beginning of spring. Very straightforward. Let's see another example. The third one is called awakening of insects. It's one month into the spring. The temperature is up. Insects wake up. Since the solar terms were officially written in the Taichu calendar in the Han Dynasty in 104 BC. They have guided the life and farming activities of Chinese for over two millennia. That's why director Zhang Yimou featured them in such an important event as the opening ceremony of Olympic Games. In fact, the beginning day of the Winter Olympics was purposely chosen on the day of the first solar term. Now, let me show you how the leap month is determined. Usually, there would be two solar terms in a lunar month. The lunar month that lets the second solar term is the leap month. This coming New Year starts on January the twenty-second. This is the first month in Chinese calendar. 
It has the first solar term beginning of spring and the second solar term rainwater. It's not a leap month. This is our January. Let's move on. This is the second month. It has the third solar term awakening of insects and the fourth solar term spring equinox. It's not a leap month. This is our February. This is the third month. Oops, it only has the fifth solar term, pure brightness. The next solar term falls one day out of it. So this is the leap month. It's a leap February. This is how a leap month is determined. The next month is a regular month with the sixth solar term and the seventh solar term within it. This fourth lunar month would be our March. Let's fast forward to the last month of the year in Chinese calendar, which falls in 2024. Because of the leap month, the next New Year's Day will be pushed to February the 10th, 2024. That looks more normal. See the point of inserting a leap month? This is the list of the leap months in the past 19 years. It clearly shows the pattern of a leap month in every 2-3 to three solar years. Here is the list of the leap months in the next 19 years. For a very long time, the solar terms in China were determined by equally dividing a solar year to 24 terms. Each term had a bit more than 15 days. The winter sources, which has the shortest daytime, was observed. The rest were determined by adding up the terms. But in the early 17th century, German astronomer Jonas Kepler proposed that the sun's speed along the ecliptic varies depending on the Earth's sound distance. Also in the 17th century, Western priests brought this latest knowledge to China. After learning the Chinese solar terms, they pointed out that instead of dividing a solar year equally, the solar terms should be determined by dividing the ecliptic into 24 sections, each section 15 degrees apart. German priest Jean Adam Schaumann Bell proposed a new calendar to the Qing Emperor. The calendar was implemented in China in 1645. The current Chinese calendar was based on and modified from this version. Because the number of days it takes the sun to travel 15 degrees on the ecliptic varies slightly throughout the year, the days between each pair of solar terms are not the same. In the coming new year, I have a lot more stories about China to tell you and will continue showing you the mountains, rivers, islands, ancient villages, castles and fortresses in China via my camera. I'm Yan Yan, subscribe to my channel. I wish you a happy and prosperous rabbit.